Hey book lovers, my name is Natalie and I love books so let's talk about them. Alright guys, in today's video we're talking about everything that I have read in February. I have my iPad in front of me. If the lighting is a little weird it's because I'm not doing this in the morning like I usually would. I'm running out of light. I've got my iPad blinding me over here. I'm sorry. This is just kind of how it is. <laughs> Maybe if I put this down here, is that better? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Now I'm just going to be looking down a lot. That's all right. Okay. So let's talk about the books that I read this month or last month because I read a lot of them. Um, we are going to start with Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian L. Weiss. This is the story of a psychiatrist, true story, purported true story, about a psychiatrist who um, he got a patient in. She had a lot of weird anxieties that didn't seem to, and I'm, I am wearing a shirt, guys, okay, that didn't seem to have anything to do with, um, you know, her life. And so he tried hypnosis with her. I think she was having a hard time getting over, you know, talking through things. So he tried hypnosis with her and he discovered that she had a lot of past lives. And then between the past lives, sometimes you would hear from masters. Um, this one was okay. I think, let's see what I rated it. Yeah, I rated it three stars. So it was okay. It wasn't great. Um, it wasn't anything that I hadn't read of or heard before. Um, so yeah, it was okay. Um, I'm not going to go much further into it. Um, I also, let me just put, I think, I think I did, no, I listened to two of them. Um, I listened to two David Sedaris books, which are When You Are Engulfed in Flames and Me Talk Pretty One Day. They were both great. They were very funny. I also tried listening to, um, Theft by Finding, but I DNF'd it. So, you know, if you don't know about David Sedaris, most of his writing is his life, the things he's gone through, his experiences, um, you know, but I did discover that his, the Theft by Finding was basically his diary entries. And so, um, sometimes you get those in his other books, his essay books, but I realized that he really does, you know, clean things up and make things, um, put things through like a lens. So it's a little bit funnier. I didn't find theft by find finding as, um, interesting as I hoped it would be. Um, but you might. So, but I did like when you were engulfed in flames, I, uh, I believe I gave that and I think I gave me talk pretty one day. Four, yeah, both of them were four star books for me. So um, that was awesome. Again, it's basically essays about his life. Um, you know, they're pretty funny. I enjoy them. So if you like essays, although I would really highly recommend that you get the audiobooks. I cannot get through his actual written books, but his audiobooks are great because to hear him read it is really what makes it for me personally. So the next book that I read after that was Cocaine Blues. It's a uh, Franny Fisher um, number one. Look at Kitty. Anyway, it's Franny Fisher number one. Um, Franny is, uh, you know, is sent basically back to Australia or goes back to Australia to check on uh, the daughter of some friends of hers or some friends of her parents in, you know, that were living in Britain. And so she goes back to Australia. Um, and if you've watched the show, uh, Miss Fisher Mysteries, you basically know from the first episode what this book is. It really, you know, it was very, very, um, it stayed very true. The, the very first episode of the show stayed very true to this novel. And I wouldn't even call it a novel. It's more like a novella. It was only about 185 pages. So it was a quick one. It was one of those that I had on my, um, Kindle. So it was one of those I was trying to get through. So, um, I rated it three stars. It was okay. I think if I hadn't have had watched the show beforehand, I would have enjoyed it a lot more, but because I had already seen it, I kind of knew what to expect. Let's see. After that, I listened to Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered, The Definitive How-To Guide by um, Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark. I gave that one a four. It was basically, um, you know, essays about their lives, um, each person's life, but I thought it was very enlightening. 
Um, I enjoyed it a lot. There must have been funny points to I know. I'm like, there must have been funny points to it. There must have been something I liked about it. I think it was just the whole thing. You know, they really kind of go through, they kind of um, bring things back to their podcast. Um, they have the My Favorite Murder podcast. Um, so they kind of bring things back to their podcast, but it's really about their lives and how they came to be where they are. So um, I enjoyed that. Then I read Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Allender. Um, this one was okay. I, well, apparently I didn't like it. I rated it two stars. But I'm looking back at it, you know, just thinking about it. It was okay. It wasn't that I didn't like it. It was just kind of meh, you know. So I'm surprised that I gave it two stars. I'm going to update that to three stars because I think it deserves three stars. Because I do remember feeling at the end of the book that I might want to read the next one. Am I actually? I don't know. Um, you know, because there are so many other books that I need to read. But, um, you know, it'll, it'll depend on whether it sticks with me or not. So there was that one. That one was okay. Um, then we had after that the Gunslinger, which I did not like. Um, but I've heard that a lot of people don't like this. Oh, Bad Girls Don't Die. So Bad Girls Don't Die is about um, this teenager and um, her sister loves dolls and just is being weird. You know, she's like, is she trying to hurt me or not? Um, it was a spooky read, you know, it's kind of a spooky haunted house possession type of thing. Um, it kind of went on a predictable route, which was fine. Um, you know, like I said, it was fine. It, that just wraps up that book. So then the next one I read was The Gunslinger, which is, um, you know, basically it tells a story about the, the gunslinger and his, um, hey kitty, what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, the gunslinger and his, him following the man in black through this desert landscape, um, and some of the adventures he goes through. Um, I, I didn't like it. I've heard a lot of people don't like it. I probably will read the next one because for, apparently for a lot of people, the second one makes a lot more sense. Um, I've heard, I don't know if it's true, but I have heard that the first one was kind of like an amalgamation of stories that were published separately and then he kind of, um, you know, tried to make it a little more cohesive. I don't know if he really managed that in the book to make it very cohesive. Um, I mean, I thought it, it could have been better, but I will probably still read the next one because so many people say that, um, you know, they really, really like the second one and then they really like the series as it goes on. I remember reading Insomnia, which is not a book that a lot of people talk about from Stephen King. And I remember being very intrigued by what was going on in the Gunslinger series through that lens. So, you know, if you've ever read Insomnia, I believe that the boy, he kind of dreams about Roland and what's happening here. So that that's what made me interested in, in it in the first place. So that was that. Um, and then I read The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, which is about a girl. She is, ugh. okay, sorry, there was a teeny little bug with wings. Anyway, um, it's about a girl. Her dad is a politician. I believe he is, a, is he a congressman? He's either a congressman or in the Senate, one of those two. But anyway, he's gone through the scandal and he cannot do anything political for the summer. And she was supposed to go to a program and is told that she cannot now go because of her father's scandal. So she winds up staying home and she has to, you know, kind of rearrange her life. And um, I really enjoyed the story. I love Morgan Matson, especially when I'm in the dead of winter and I'm tired of it. And I know a lot of you are like, you live in South Carolina. Do you even have winter there? Uh, we have winter to us <laughs> and it gets cold for us. And um, February is usually the worst. Um, and then it starts to warm up. But, you know, so February is usually around where I reach for a Morgan Matson book. They're very, um, for me, they really what is the word I'm looking for here? They really, um, you know, they just have that spirit. They have that feeling of summer. Um, and so I really, really love those books. 
especially when I'm craving summer. Um, they're sweet. This book was very much about friendship. I really loved that it referenced um, Second Chance Summer and that it also referenced Since You've Been Gone. So the people that were there. So I'm guessing that, you know, these people all live in the same town, Stanwich, Connecticut. And um, so you do see them. And I like that, you know, because you're not in a bubble when you live in a town. You will see people that maybe you don't know, but you know, they're, yeah, it makes sense. And I liked it. There we go. We'll stop there. After that, I finished Rhett and Link's Book of Mythicality um, by Rhett McLaughlin and uh, Link Neal, another, um, you know, good mor mythical morning type of thing. Um, this was also, you know, essays about their life. Um, I think I started it in January, but it was our you know, when we're driving around running errands book. So it took us, took me a little longer on that one, but it was good. I enjoyed it. They were funny. Um, definitely a good listen when you have kids around. So, um, I like that. Um, I also listened to Let's Pretend This Never Happened by Jenny Lawson. I love Jenny Lawson. Um, you know, her book Furiously Happy made me laugh. And so did this one. This one definitely had some fun things. Um, you know, again, there's not much to say because it is essays about her life and about her childhood and that kind of thing. So you've got that. Um, and I, I'm, I'm never sure what to say about it. It's like, you just kind of have to read it and see if you like it. Um, I do like her sense of humor. It's just like David Sedaris. I like his sense of humor. Um, you know, so it's kind of one of those things you're going to just have to try it and see if you're compatible with that or not. Um, then I've read So You've Been Publicly Shamed. I think I gave, uh, by the way, let's pretend this never happened. I'm pretty sure I gave that one a four rating. And I'm pretty sure I gave, uh, yeah, Rhett, Book of Mythicality a four star rating. Um, um, and then my very last book that I finished in February was Trickery, Curse of the Gods by Jamin Eve and Jane Washington. It was something that I saw another booktuber mentioned. It's about this um, girl, Willa, and, you know, it's in this fantasy world. It's set in this fantasy world. It's a reverse harem romance. Um, I wasn't completely sure that it was marketed to teens, but after I've read this book, I think it might be marketed to teens because there was not like a lot happening um, that you would normally see in adult romance. So, um, I don't know, you know, this one was okay for me. Um, it was not as interesting as I would have liked. Again, I think this book suffered a lot from no real obstacles. Um, and when there's, or the obstacles were really easy for the, uh, main characters to overcome. And I, I know I read a book in January that was very much like that. You know, it felt kind of like, oh, here's an obstacle. Oh, it was very easy to overcome. Here's another obstacle. Oh, that one's very easy to overcome as well. You know, when they're like that, um, it just, it kind of does make the book boring. Please authors, please. If you're gonna put your characters in, in you know, have obstacles in front of your characters, they, they definitely need to look like they might not be able to get past this obstacle. I mean, there are a few writers who can manage to make things not look insurmountable, but, um, I mean, those are very few and far between and still keep things interesting. So, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like there was a lot on the line for any of these people, you know, if things went wrong. I don't know if I'm gonna read the next one. I put it on my Kindle Unlimited list. I have a list with my Kindle Unlimited books um, because I paid, you know, I paid, I get Kindle Unlimited and I definitely wanna read some of the books. So. You'll see those in here. You'll see those uh, put in as well. So I'll be reading those monthly as well. But um, I don't know if I'm gonna read the next one. I there were a couple of like mystery type things that I'm intrigued about, but I might just like find some recaps or read some reviews because some of y'all are really bad with spoilers, uh, <laughs> and um, you know see if I was right and how things end up as opposed to reading it. Um, but 
I absolutely and truly would recommend, you know, if you like that kind of thing, um, pick it up. You might enjoy the book. I saw a lot of people really, really enjoyed it and gave it five stars. It just, there wasn't enough happen. Well, I don't want to say there wasn't enough happening. Um, there was a lot happening. I just wasn't really, you know, intrigued by it. So take that for what it is. Um, so, you know, so let's recap stars right quick. Many Lives, Many Masters got three stars. When You Are Engulfed in Flames and Me Talk Pretty One Day got four. Cocaine Blues, three stars. Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered, four stars. Bad Girls Don't Die, three stars. I updated that one to three stars. The Gunslinger, two stars. The Unexpected Everything got four stars. Um, by the way, that one was a really sweet story about friendship. That one really focused on friendship and I like that. Um, as opposed to, you know, your summer romance. Uh, Rhett and Link's Book of Mythicality got four stars from me. Oh, I never talked about Say You've Been Publicly Shamed. Um, Let's Pretend This Never Happened, four stars. I also listened to Say You've Been Publicly Shamed. That one got five stars from me. Um, it's, you know, John Ronson wrote it and he just talks about people who've been publicly shamed, uh, specifically, you know, via social media and how their lives have changed by that and how it affects them. And I thought it was really thought provoking and it makes you realize that there are a lot of bandwagons, you know, even, um, I just recently saw one and, you know, when you're on social media and you have that presence, that media presence, um, you know, you kind of have to watch what you say and watch what you do. And sometimes people misconstrue things and, um, you know, that can make or break you basically. Um, it sure did for some of these people in the story, you know, in, in the, in the book. So it was, it was really thought provoking. And I realized, you know, that sometimes when you jump on, you know, bandwagon, you know, um, for shaming someone publicly, that it might have consequences that you don't see, you don't know, and you might regret at some point. Um, so, you know, it made me think twice about that kind of behavior. I think we've all done it at one point or another, um, whether we want to admit it or not, and uh, make you realize that maybe that kind of behavior is not um, the best behavior that you know, you could have. So, um, that one got a five stars from me. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, and then of course, Trickery, Curse of the Gods, that one was a three star for me. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. So that was it for February. Look at me. And I got it under 18 minutes. I was worried because I, I read 12 books. Um, so, you know, I, I consumed a lot of books this month, but, um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. That's everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you have watched a couple of my videos, um, maybe you're finding something that you like here, hit that subscribe button. Um, I appreciate you guys so, so much. I have noticed a couple of new subscribers that have subscribed. Thank you so much to, for subscribing. And um, thanks, guys. All right.